Alright guys, in this video we're going to show you some of the different features of the GUI for the Dragon Link version 3. Some of the really cool options that you guys can do and configurations you can change on the actual transmitter and receiver. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and connect the receiver. And this is after you guys have already made sure you have the correct drivers to connect to the receiver. And also you have the correct firmware installed on the receiver. And furthermore, you have the actual graphical user interface. Now, I have a beta version, so it may change. It may get prettier, and a couple other features may be added as you go down. So first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go to our DragonLink V3 configuration tool. Now, there's one for the receiver and one for the transmitter. So we're going to go ahead and run that guy there. And as you can see, it pops up here. It says, nothing found. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug the USB using a USB micro cable. This is the cable that came on my Samsung Galaxy phone. So most of you guys should have this micro USB cable. As you can see, we've gone ahead and connected here. We've got a red light saying that we've got power. We've also got a green light showing the status. And on the computer, as you can see, that the micro RX is connected. However, we do not have a blue light. A quick note, if you have servos plugged into the actual receiver, uh, the computer is not going to power that device. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the transmitter. Got the nice cool little beeps. We've got solid green, solid blue light. We've also got a solid blue light on the receiver showing that we have full connectivity. Now on the actual GUI you can see different things like channel movements, uh, you can monitor where the endpoints are and uh, other really cool features. You can also verify that you have a a different ID. Usually the transmitters ship out with, I believe, ID 391. So if you do get your transmitter, make sure you guys change the ID to something random. Uh, this is something that has to be done from the actual transmitter itself. You've got here on the PPM side, you can change it to PPM, SBUS, uh, however many channels you want the receiver to output through the PPM port. You've also got uh, a beacon option here. So if your aircraft goes down and you don't have anything for 300 seconds, it will initiate a beacon. Uh, as you can see, I've got the RF protocols, the V3. You can change that to V2 if you needed to, but uh, V3 is going to be the current protocol. You can also reboot the receiver directly from here. You can save these settings. Maybe you want to set up another aircraft exactly the same. You can do that here. You can go through and actually change each one of the channels. So if you want out, micro output channel one to actually output channel three, you can do that in this little interface here. Uh, channel seven is set up to do PPM on mine, but you can change that to any of the other pins. You can also change them to SBUS. You can change them to uh, um, different things like RSSI. If you guys look closely here, there's GPS RX. What that means is because the new DragonLink transmitter does two-way telemetry, you can actually plug a GPS directly into one of the PWM ports and receive that GPS data into the actual DragonLink receiver. A couple other really cool features, you've got a spectrum analyzer. You can see here that we're pumping out on the uh, 433 to 437 band and it's jumping around. That's because the uh, DragonLink transmitter is uh, hopping to the different channels to make sure that we don't get any interference. You can enable logging, so if you want to have uh, the receiver log different uh, instances, that will be available for you guys here. There's also advanced calibrator uh, a calibration. This is no longer needed. Uh, the V3 does not allow you to calibrate. It's already set up to work perfectly. Here's where you go into the GPS settings and change the baud rate and uh, other functionality for getting your GPS working. And finally, we've got a workspace here. This is more of a developer uh, app style stuff. All right, now getting into the GUI for the actual transmitter itself. It's got a little more functionality than the receiver and uh, a couple little things that are new and uh, exciting for the DragonLink V3. First and foremost, we've got a data port right here. So you can update your firmware and you can get into the GUI directly from the actual transmitter. You don't need any FTDI cables or anything, uh, any third party cables. So as you can see, we've got the GUI loaded up here. It says nothing found. It's flashing and waiting for the transmitter. Again, another quick note, when you do plug this into your computer, it will give enough power to actually power the transmitter so that it can read on the software and on the computer, but it will not transmit anything to the servos without being plugged into your transmitter. So as you guys can see, we've got uh, a little bit of uh, 
of a monitor here. You can see the different servos and the different uh, movements as I'm moving the sticks and flipping the switches on the actual transmitter itself. So that's pretty exciting. That's pretty cool to have all that stuff there. Um, moving over to the left side, you've got channel mixing. So if you want to change a channel to output something else, you can do that. Um, you've got two sets of switches here. You've got PPM1. That's going to be from the PPM input 1. And then you've also got PPM input 2. So if you're running, say, a head tracker or a two-man operation, you've got uh, those controls here. If you look down here at the bottom, you've also got switch 1, 2, rotary pot, and voltage. What the switch 1 and 2 do is basically allow you to use the toggle switches on the top of the transmitter. You can allow you using the pot. So this will output to the receiver the different functions that you want it to do. And lastly, we've got voltage here. What the voltage does is uh, allows you to change the power output of the transmitter itself. So moving over here to the right, you can see power. I've got mine set up to 100 milliwatts, 400 milliwatts, and 800 milliwatts. I do believe there's going to be a new firmware update that will allow you to select auto. So as the transmitter starts going, uh, as the receiver starts going farther and farther out and it starts to lose packets, the transmitter will up the power to compensate and make sure you have that solid control for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. Moving down here, we've got the power switch uh, programming here, so you can go ahead and switch that there. Uh, as you can see, we've got the V3 protocol. Here's where you can turn on the bi-directional transmission, so you can use, you can actually opt to turn off the two-way transmission. So if you've got a, a aircraft and you just want to make sure you have that solid control just going out, you don't really need the two-way, it'd be a good idea to turn that off, just uh, if you don't need it, it's better to have it dis disabled. You also got the checkbox here to use the 1280 megahertz friendly software, the firmware. So if you guys are flying on uh, 1.2, this might be another option for you guys. Very easy to set up there. As you can see, we've got transmission channels, eight channels, the uplink, downlink, baud rate. This is currently disabled right now. Another really cool feature, uh, some of the guys were having problems with binding. They didn't know when to let go of the button. You can actually now initiate bind directly from the GUI. You can also reboot the transmitter from there as well and save the settings. Say if you've got another transmitter you want to set it up the same exact way, it's there. Uh, going into the configurations for the micro channel, you can now change the different functions directly from here. So what will happen is the transmitter will send the commands to the receiver, the receiver will acknowledge and save them. So there's no need to plug in your aircraft to change last minute things, you can actually do it directly from the transmitter. Also, we've got that cool spectrum analyzer. As you can see, we're bouncing around the 427 to 437 range. We've got SD logging. This is where you would turn on the SD card on the bottom of your transmitter. You would actually plug that in there. All the telemetry data coming in would log directly to the SD card, and then you can pull it out and utilize it however you need to. Next, we've got uh, alarm sounds. For those guys who don't want to have a separate display device, you can now set up different alarms. So if you guys are losing packets, the actual transmitter will start beeping at you. If you're getting low RSSI, you can set that in here and it'll start beeping at you, letting you know, hey, we're losing uh, we're losing control here. Then you've also got an option for uh, low flight voltage. So if you set up a current sensor or a voltage monitor in your aircraft, DragonLink can now monitor that for you and beep at you, telling you, hey, we're losing battery, it's time to turn around. Uh, there's also a couple other different options. We've got uh, different functions here for uh, change the power level, micro power mode, if you put it in servo mode or bind mode, it's got different beeps and functions. Uh, I believe that they're going to be upgrading this and there'll be a lot more features here to come. And lastly, we've got the workplace. This is more of a uh, developer area. All right, guys, that concludes your quick tour of the GUI for the new DragonLink v3 system we're really excited about this we've been actually using this for the last month or two and uh, we're getting pretty good results and we're really excited to see the future capabilities of these uh, i know once these hit the market it's going to fall in the hands of some really talented people and they'll be able to push this thing to its limits i hope you guys enjoyed this video and it wasn't too boring and uh, if you guys did, make sure you guys click the like button to stay up to date with the latest and greatest in FPV. We usually get the stuff before everybody else does. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button. And uh, hope you guys enjoy the new shop. We're going to go ahead and uh, give you guys a tour of that. You can check that out in some upcoming videos. As always, I'm Johnny with Team Legit. Thanks for watching. We've got the two top 
LRS systems on the market right now. Uh, and the reason I say LRS instead of UHF systems is because the TBS Crossfire is running on a different frequency rather than the Dragon Link version 3 which is running on UHF. So today we're going to give you guys a breakdown and we're going to compare these two devices. Stay tuned. Intelligence proven. <laughs> Monkey.